Hey friends and welcome back to the Zeppelin video series. In this video I want to talk about a few pro tips. So if you're now using Zeppelin for a while I think it's time to step up a bit. I will give you some advanced tips, some file management tips and some tricks that will help you to have a better handoff, design handoff and collaboration with your stakeholders. So sometimes you have a really big design file and I just used a UI kit to show you this. Um, we have so many screens, so many artboards in here uh, and it's super important that if that's the case, if you have so many screens, that you create a good amount of sections. You see that we have a certain not really fitting uh, selection right here. Um, so let me um, create a section from our selection and I'm gonna call this miscellaneous because maybe that's just some, some ideas that you have. Um, and then we have something, this is uh, like the log screen and uh, we have a main screen that is starting from down here. Um, and now we should select like those screens and create a selection for that, which is, as I said, the lock screen. And you should really create a good amount of, um, of selections because, uh, not of selections, but of sections, because it will help you and the people who are using Zeppelin to view the project and to view your designs, to not be really confused by the sheer amount of screens, but to just uh, work very productive and fast inside the app. So make sure to always have sections because it's like a visual way of grouping your artboards. Something else that you can do is to add tags and work with tags. So for example, you can add a tag and maybe this is the, this screen is done. Then you have a tag for this screen and it's right in here. Uh, let's create another one for maybe these two screens right here and let's say that they are in progress. Uh, that means you are still working on them and you can, that you can also have a tag for those two screens and we're gonna say that those two are just starting or something like that. You now see that if I click one of those screens right here and add a tag that we get a list of certain tags and we can say this one is done and then you just have a certain selection of tags that are also available up here. And if you now select one of those tags, it's now filtering your amount of your, like this really big list of artboards by the tagged um, by the tagged screens that we um, basically just tagged. And you can also go and hit untagged and you will see all of the rest. So that is a visual way and a fast way to have a certain like tag and filter method. You can of course also create your own concept of uh, tags, but I think one of, one of the good ways and best ways to do it is to have a tag for screens which are done from your perspective, then screens which are still in progress and maybe like a screen that is just starting out, that is just a rough idea or something like that. This is like just my attempt to do it right here. Of course, you can find your own way. Maybe talk to your developers and product project managers on how you should tag them. Then you can uh, create a tag structure that you can use in not just this current project, but maybe in also the upcoming uh, projects that you will upload into Zeppelin. A different way to use tags is to define a certain tag for each employee. So maybe we have an employee who is called Max and maybe we have another employee who is a maybe a developer uh, and is called, um, I don't know, Lucas maybe. Then you can create a tag for those employees and you simply see that Lucas has to work on kind of a lot of screens and Max is really just focusing on this single screen. So you can uh, use tags for assigning screens to a certain person basically. And uh, of course you can also manage a tag and delete it from the screen. 
which means that it's not in the list anymore. But that's also a way to do it, also a very good idea, um, to assign a certain amount of screens and artboards to a certain employee. Another pro tip is to always double check your designs once you either uploaded them into Zeppelin or you are just checking them out in Sketch to make sure that assets are always exportable. For example, uh, we have a timer icon right here or a uh, lightning icon right here. Um, it's always super important that those icons and assets are exportable. So, for example, as I said, those right here aren't exportable and if a developer comes and wants to get them to implement them into the code, into the design, um, he will need to contact you and say, Max, I really need those icons as an asset. Can you make them exportable for me? And that happens so often to myself. Um, and I think that's a problem that will that will probably be never fixed because uh, you will always forget to make a certain thing exportable. But it's a good idea to double check uh, your screens, either once they are uploaded to Zeppelin if a certain if a certain uh, asset is made exportable, or you just you check it before importing it um, in, in Sketch, of course. That way the collaboration will be much better, there will be less frustration for developers or people who will then uh, continue with your design. But also think about it like this, if you are sick or if you are on holiday and somebody like your developer is really needing um, a certain icon, then he can't really get it because you are not available. Um, maybe he has to contact someone else who has the sketch file or who has access to sketch. Maybe because he doesn't have sketch on his device. Um, so it can be quite problematic. Uh, I always recommend to just try to double check your designs and have a close collaboration with the people who will continue with your design, that they have the assets that they need. Another pro tip is to use the version history of a certain screen. Now on this screen we don't have any versions, but if I go on this screen and I select the little hourglass right here, I also see that there is a little tooltip for me. If I then click it, I see that, they are, that there are multiple versions, um, or basically, yeah, historic versions of our screen. I can then select them and see that there have been made some changes. I see that is it's an earlier version from March the 9th. And I can also add a certain uh, commit message right here. I can also delete, of course, a certain version in here. Um, and it really makes it easy to just compare those versions because maybe you want to look back on an old screen to see how you did it there uh, because inside sketch i think we don't really have a good version control or version history just yet i think that's something that will be available very soon but at the moment uh zeppelin is the best way to make sure that uh, you can check your version history so I hope that these few tips help you to become a better designer, to have a better design handoff and to work inside Zeppelin on a more advanced and pro level. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a couple of things. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get a notification once I upload a new video or once I start a new live stream. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and we see us in the next one. Bye.